Are we live? I can't tell if we are. Oh, hi Kelly, good, I'm glad. We are working, this works, huh? All right, I'm not starting the class yet. I just wanted to test the system because um, it's technology. <laughs> So if you are going to join me this morning for, um, hi, M, good to see you. Um, if you're going to join me this morning for therapeutic yoga in your living room, in your home, you will need a yoga belt or some kind of strap thing like this. A, bathro a bathrobe belt will work, um, a regular belt, a scarf, anything like that. It just should not be stretchy. It needs to have some tension in it. And then also have a bolster or any kind of pillow also rolled up um, big bath towels will work or rolled up towels you'll just want something that you can support your head uh, if needed and today we are going to be working on therapeutic yoga for hands arms and shoulders and my name is Michelle Anderson and we're here in Boulder Colorado this morning it's beautiful out it's snowing and um, I'm the yoga director at movement climbing and fitness in Boulder and I'm also the owner of Biodynamic Yoga, which is my private practice. And if you are practicing from home today, especially if you've never done therapeutic yoga with me before, be super conservative. We really just want to um, give our brains and our nervous system a chance to find that place between stimulus and action, that there's a pause in there. And we want to work only at the at the pacing of the body not at the pacing of the mind the mind is always racing it's hard to keep up with the rapidly changing world so we're going to give our systems a chance to kind of reset we're going to be working with the hands today too and the hands are really connected to our brain 25 percent of our motor cortex in our brain which is a full quarter of movement function is dedicated to our hands so we work in a little bit with hands, with arms, shoulders, neck, everything. So in that pause today, when you join me, in between the stimulus, between what you hear and what you do, the way you act, in that pause, we really have the opportunity to, to kind of choose and create what kind of experience we want to have. We can choose um, this kind of possibility and creativity over fear and paralysis. We can choose action over reaction. We can choose collaboration over selfishness, um, collaboration over isolation, and definitely we can choose love over hate. So if you're in your living room, I want you to first just lie down on your back, have your yoga belt nearby, have your bolster kind of above your head somewhere. And then just lie on your back. If you have definitely sensitive shoulders and sensitive necks, I want you to put that bolster underneath your head. Support your head in some way. So you're going to be flat out on the floor. Bend your knees. Interlock your hands behind your head, just like you're taking a little sun bath. And then close your eyes. And just kind of wait. Notice what happens when you close your eyes. Notice the pacing in your mind. Feel your breathing. Interacting with the way that your shoulder blades feel against the floor, with the way that your elbows feel against the floor. And with your hands behind your head like this, just lying on your back, if there's any pain or discomfort in your shoulder blades, try not to avoid it. If it's hard for you to have the elbows dropping down on the floor like that, then definitely support your head, put your head on the pillow, put your head on the bolster, so that your elbows are on top of something. 
And just begin to have that pause, even now, between the stimulation and your reaction. And definitely in the sequence today, I don't want you to have any kind of pain or any kind of concern, but you will feel everything that's already going on. Lift your nose a little bit. Keep your eyes closed. We're just beginning the practice now. We're just beginning this class. We are working directly with the sense of anticipation that we all have, that our brains create. That sense of anticipation, often we are kind of expecting the worst. So I want us to work today in a way that we rewire and reset that tendency in the brain, that the being here, the kind of waiting, the being in the pause is the work. Go ahead and switch the interlock of your fingers now, just so you have the other index finger on top. You still have your head on the floor with a bolster. I'm sitting here in my living room looking at the camera and visualizing and memory, remembering for myself the decades of yoga practice, the potential for so many people to be practicing a reset in their brains together. Feel yourself breathing against the floor. And let the sensations of your floor just be information to your body, that your body is bringing information to your brain now instead of things that you're looking at. You're just hearing your body, you're listening to your body. I want you to listen very well. Definitely don't override any signals your body might give you that you need to slow down. So I want you to go very slow. Release your arms now. Have your head on the floor. So if you had your head on the cushion or the bolster, just push it back behind you. Push it an arm's distance back. And after releasing your hands, lift your arms up towards the ceiling. So you're going to be reaching them straight out in front of you at shoulder height up towards the sky. Spread your fingers. Open your hands as much as you can. Feel the skin of your palms opening. Open your eyes one time and just look at your all 10 fingers. Visually check them. You may have histories today of the tendon pulleys, which we get so often in our fingers. We're going to be working with those. You may have elbow tendonitis or a history of that kind of thing, or even the, the bicep tendonitis that we get so often, or shoulder cuff injuries. Don't let those histories define you, but you will notice them. And this yoga practice today is to start to return to you full functionality of your entire shoulder girdle. That's fingers, hands, elbows, arms, shoulder blades, upper spine. 
So we're working today for the function, not so much as a hard workout. Now, with your hands, keep them about shoulder width apart. Continue to spread your fingers and extend your elbows. Straighten those elbows as much as you can. Use the elbow joint. And then lift your hands up towards the ceiling. Feel your shoulder blades kind of separating on your back, moving apart, exposing those upper back ribs. Keep all that. And then slowly begin to lift your hands up and overhead, moving them towards the floor above you. Go slowly, not avoiding the shoulder sensations, not avoiding pain, but stop right before you find a painful sensation and then wait. You may place your hands on the floor above you. You may place your hands on top of the bolster above you. Or you might have your hands hovering in the air. Let them hover. And then just keep opening your fingers apart. Keep extending your elbows. As you have those arms reaching up and overhead, about shoulder width apart, keep beginning now to move the whole arm structure back. You may be working with one hand a little bit higher than the other. That's okay. Hi, Dan. Nice to see you. I want you to explore a little bit the width that you have your arms apart. So if you find it a lot of a struggle to have them shoulder width apart, just spread them wide or open up some space between the, the tops of your shoulder and your neck. We're going to be just changing the angles here, going wider and going narrower, not trying to accomplish some kind of pose, but just looking to stimulate the movement across the shoulder girdle. So much blood flow here to your brain, so much important lymphatic organs in the neck and the armpits and in the shoulders. So we are moving for the health. You have your spine on the floor. You have your knees bent. You have your arms extending up and overhead with all 10 fingers opening. And just notice when it becomes difficult to keep your elbows straight. Keep asking for this elbow function. Keep asking for this hand function. And then very, very, very slowly, begin to bring your arms a little bit closer together so you're moving the whole upper arm structure in towards your ears and use your thumbs coming towards each other as reference. So you might at this point have your thumbs touching, maybe separated a little bit if that's too much. You might have your hands on the floor or on top of that bolster or pillow. Close your eyes again. Now you're just working from feeling mode. Continue working from this feeling mode and if you have extra room, if space is coming available in your shoulders, slide your upper arm bones even closer, bringing the biceps towards the ears, the whole arm structure coming towards you. And have your hands centering in line with the crown of your head. Place the right hand on top of the left. Keep extending the elbows, opening all 10 fingers. The arms are reaching away. You're making a long spine. You're stretching the skin, covering your whole body. Focus on that skin now as the effort gets a little bit more intense when you have the arms so close. Let this action kind of spread the shoulder blades away from each other.
take a breath and now change the stack of hands have the left on top of the right and I know it's really tempting for that right hand to want to hold on to the left and pull it back but I want you opening each hand separately spreading all ten fingers and feeling the difficulty feeling the leverage of the floor we are all built kind of asymmetrically and this position kind of shows you the differences. But it's part of our functional movement. Take a breath. And now very slowly separate your hands apart. So go to a comfortable distance, shoulder width or greater. And then just see if you can let your arms rest above your head. Spine on the floor, head on the floor, arms above you, no effort at all. Resting. A lot of times when we experience an impulse a stimulation like that amount of effort and that amount of sensation, we want to push it away as soon as possible. And here we're seeing if we can be in that pause doing nothing. Very slowly, letting each arm move at its own pace. Bring one arm down, resting it by your side, one arm down at a time. feel a little bit of tingling sensation as the blood flow returns. You were almost 15 minutes with your arms overhead working in that way. So I want you to grab that bolster or your pillow, slide it underneath your head so you've got some support. You have your head on this pillow or bolster and now find your yoga belt or your strap, whatever you have. Bend your knees up again and I want you to put that belt on the ball of your right foot, but then lower your right leg down to a 45 degree angle. So your leg's gonna be low like this, not way up here, but down. Because I want you to have your hands holding the belt and registering the weight of your leg. So while you're getting that set up, don't think about this as a hamstring stretch at all. It's for your hands, it's for your arms and shoulders. So look at your hands, and I want you to walk your hands up the belt, have your arms straight, and avoid wrapping that belt around your hands. That kind of strangles your palm. I want you to use all 10 fingers separately, kind of squeezing the belt. Now have your leg at that low angle and flex your foot. Fold the ankle, bring the toes back towards your knee. So your knee is straight and you're reaching your heel away. And then just kind of keep it there, closing your eyes and start to hook up and feel the weight. And I know the first thing, even super strong climbers with amazing grip, the first thing you wanna do is wrap that belt around your hands, but I'm asking you not to today. Just hold the fabric. Breathing now. In the holding of that belt fabric, you'll be bringing some stimulation and a kind of cleansing to all these finger joints. Studies have shown that grip vitality, grip strength, is a sign of overall vitality, kind of an overall... Um, resiliency, an overall adaptability in 
the nervous system and in the immune system. So just notice how in the time your grip may begin to show you where things are breaking down a little bit. Breathe, make this as easy as possible, but we are here for some time, so just do the best that you can. Relax your neck and shoulders. And just let your leg be kind of a passive rider in that belt. And in a moment when we let go of the belt, you'll want to shake out your hands or rub them out because it's kind of painful, it kind of hurts. But we are made to use these fingers and have this really consistent grip. So when we let go, just let your hands rest somewhere, take a little break, let the blood flow have that cleansing effect. Go ahead and release the belt down, set the right foot on the floor, take a little break. See if you can feel the rate of your own circulation changing. When you're ready, place your belt on the left foot, ball of the foot right across the roots of the toes. Have your two knees together. So you're going to have your left leg down at that more 45 degree angle. The place where you can straighten your knee. Use your knee joint. Fold the ankle joint. Bring the toes down. Walk your hands up the yoga belt. Hold on to it. Notice which finger doesn't squeeze as well as the others. Make all those fingers work better. And when you feel that fatigue coming in your hands, and it comes pretty quick, even for very strong folks, when you feel that fatigue coming, that urge to wrap it around your hand, have that pause between that stimulus and your reaction choose to make your system better. I really like doing the hand and strap work with the climbers because the muscles that move your fingers that work these joints they're all in your palms and in your forearms. You don't have muscles in the fingers themselves, it's just these pulleys, it's just these tendons. Stay and breathe. If you're seeing me moving around, I'm looking for a power source because I have a technical issue. Solved. <laughs> I hope. Go ahead and release that belt now. Take a breath, see if you can feel that effect that using the hands has on the system. It's quite profound. Roll onto one side, and then just bring yourself up to sitting, and sit on your cushion. Have your feet in front of you, a good distance away from the bolster, a full, full two hands span. So now you're using your own hands as a measuring tool. How cool is that? hands in front of you, knees apart. Very simple, easy posture. So you've been working with hands a lot and I just want you to drop your head down now. Drop your head, drop your shoulders, allow your spine to fold forward into this Baddha Konasana shape. Allow shoulder blades to drop, spine to curl, find ease. Also some relief in the back from having been on your spine for so long.
direct your awareness to your breathing. You don't have to change anything at all. Just feel the back side of your spine now, the back side of your lungs, the skin covering your rib cage and your shoulder blades, the place between the shoulder blades. And then if you have room, bring your hands to the floor in front of you. You're still kind of folding forward, dropping down. And feel on the floor with your hands. Keep your eyes closed. Just kind of push the floor away as if you were feeling around in the dark, which we are made to be able to do. We've all done it. And then with that sense of kind of feeling around in the dark, start to walk your hands over towards the right side just kind of bringing your spine over your right knee. Spine is coming towards the right thigh. Drop your head down, don't do the movement from your neck. And begin to open the skin covering the whole left side of your body. Slide the left hand away and move the left sitting bone down onto your bolster. Use your right hand to kind of push the floor away a, a little bit so you have that leverage. It's just a leverage system. Take a breath. And in that same feeling tone, walk your hands back to the center. Discovering that floor space out in front of you with your eyes closed. And then walk your hands over to the left. And you're just gonna bring your spine kind of towards that left thigh. Nothing too intense. It's really more to enliven your skin feeling. Slide that right hand away. Move the right sitting bone down. Use your left hand to support you a little bit. There's be a tiny twist across the tops of the shoulder blades. Inhale and exhale. And then bring yourself back to the center. Walk the hands back to the center. Bring yourself back up to sitting slowly. Come up with closed eyes. Slowly open your eyes and let in the light. Now, release your legs, just extend them out in front of you. Grab hold of your yoga belt, and I want you to take this belt and fold it in half twice. So, fold it. And then work with your fabrics, whatever that fabric happens to be, so that you have this long kind of well-folded belt, there's no wrinkles, there's no twists, because this fabric is gonna be as feedback for your hands again. And I just wanna show you this one. You're gonna hold the belt with your hands about belt width apart, and then see how you can roll your wrists down. We're gonna be doing this, and also have your wrists flat. So that's flat not cocked back, so I don't want to see this. I want you to have them flat and then the ability to curl them down. We're gonna have them starting flat, then curling down, starting flat, walking together, flat wrists, and then curling down. This one's really fun. Not only with the curling down, but I also want you to have this sense that you can kind of break it, that you can pull it apart. So have that lie on your floor again. No head support this time. No bolster behind you. I want you to have lots of room above your heads. So find that position. And then bend your knees up. Have your feet on the floor. Grab hold of your belt. And lift your arms up towards the ceiling. So you're reaching up towards the sky, the way we started before, but this time you're holding that yoga belt, you're holding that strip of fabric. And in the same way now, I want you to kind of massage that belt, moving your hands across and moving your hands across till you're holding the ends of it. 
And when you reach to the end, that is the work. Begin to squeeze gently now with all 10 fingers. Straighten your elbows. Have a little bit of action inside your whole shoulder structure that's kind of breaking the belt, it's kind of pulling it apart. Keep all those details, keep all of those refinements. We're now really kind of working in between the two bones that make up your forearm and connect into the elbow. So I really like this one for the elbows, especially when you add that kind of tearing. Make sure right now that your wrists are flat. They're not coming back towards your shoulders. They're flat. Take a breath. Lift the belt up towards the ceiling and then begin to move your hands up and overhead towards the floor. They may not go all the way to the floor and it's okay if you're hovering in the air. If you're hovering in the air, you can still be kind of working with the tension on the belt, even if that belt isn't horizontal. Now when you find a place of work in the arms, I want you to stay right there on the edge of that work. Keep reaching the arms away from you. Where you're really creating a new kind of grip at the very edge of where your nervous system is used to going. So we're just asking for those improvements along the edge which kind of keep us from losing mobility over time. It keeps us from having the losses in these hand function. Now, you still have your hands shoulder width apart and now I want you to come into that second position I showed you, which is where you're kind of doing like a little forearm curl. You're bringing all your knuckles towards your elbow. If you're orienting towards the ceiling, your knuckles are moving up towards the ceiling and then towards the elbow. And you're feeling the back of your wrist open. You might start to feel this almost kind of cramp running through the palm of the hand and running through the, the forearm. Just be on the edge of these cramps. Keep refining and recruiting this really fine motor skill and also tear the belt. So it's quite a complex action. We might be the only species that can do this because of our thumbs. Pretty cool. Take a breath. And then un, undo the curling. Slowly lift the belt, bring it back up towards the ceiling. So you're bringing it from overhead back so it's above your face. You can see it now with your visual field. Open your eyes and then walk your hands in towards the center of that belt. Sliding them, sliding them, sliding them, sliding them. So when you bring your hands to the center, you still have the fingers curled over one side and the thumb curled under the other side, and you have the inner, inner edges of your hands touching. They may come apart eventually, but that's okay. Just have them touching for the moment. And then see if you can bring your wrists towards each other. Pulling the belt apart, squeezing with all 10 fingers. Wrists are flat to start. Respect this different angle of the work. And one more time, up and overhead towards the floor. The floor is just a direction, not a goal. So take your time. Take a breath. and now slowly begin to curl as we did before. Curling and breaking, breaking the belt.
there is quite a lot of effort and strength required in this movement. But kind of change your focus. Come back to the sensation coming across the collarbones and across your throat. Feel that the movement is necessary for opening and stimulating this brachial plexus, this blood flow to the brain, to the arms and shoulders, everything under the collarbone structure. Take a breath. Now I want you to keep this forearm curl and keep this position. Keep it. Keep it all the way up away from the floor. Bring your hands up now, but refine, refine, refine each finger, each forearm muscle, each part of the elbow and interosseous membrane. And when you get to the top, slowly uncurl the forearms slide your hands apart and then release the belt to the floor close your eyes So we're in that pause again. <laughs> Such a pause. Let's prepare to finish our class. So I recommend grabbing your bolster, placing it under your head again and rolling onto your side. Just rest there for a moment. And just let this relatively short moment in time be a reset for you. Be a way to help you structure your day. And when you're ready, you can come up to sitting. And notice this gesture we do with our hands, with our arms, our namaste. Thank you for practicing. Namaste. Thank you, Molly, Maria, Melanie. M. Kelly, thank you all for being here. See you later.